the moon, the moon to the sun, right? The moon is 400 times smaller than the sun. Got it? Okay. You may want to take notes. But it's 400 <coughs> times closer than the sun. Well, isn't that a coincidence? No, it's not. <laughs> this is God's amazing plan. So it appears to be the same size in the sky. You look at a full moon, and it appears to be the same size. as It's not. But that's how God placed it in his perfect plan. We're not Jesus, but we bring his presence. It says, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. 2 Corinthians 2.14. God uses us to bring his presence. Where? Into the grocery stores, right? Into the shopping malls, into the workplace, into your home. You are the light that the Lord has chosen to place close to the, into the darkness in order to shine his light. I think that's pretty cool. I, I can get pretty excited about that, actually. I mean, I really can, because I think that's fascinating. I'll tell you a fact about the moon. I want you to write all this down. Like, there may be a test. There's not always a full moon. Well, there actually is. But it's not always visible that way. Right? Oh, right. The apparent size and brightness of the moon is determined by how much of the Earth, the world, is between the sun and the moon. The more of the world that's in the way, the less of the light. That's why you sometimes see a half moon or a sliver of the moon. It's because the world is blocking. It's standing between the moon and the sun and blocking that. Yes. Right? So if, if we let the world get totally between us and Jesus, between the sun, what you have is a lunar eclipse. <laughs> the light of the sun does not reach the moon. Now think about that. It says consider this. When you let the world get between you and the Lord, it dims his light in your life. And by the same token, if you let the moon get completely between the world and the sun, that's called a solar eclipse. And no light is seen from either. This is the danger of pride. If we put ourselves in front of God, so people see us instead of him, there's no reflection of anything. All of a sudden, you can't see the light of the sun, you can't see the light on the moon, and you can't see any light on earth. It's just darkness. The pride of the church, or individual Christians who would stand in front of Jesus so that they might be seen, bring about darkness. Mm -hmm. Remember, without the light of the sun and the moon, the moon would never be, or the light of the sun, the moon would never be seen. Yeah. The pride of the church hides the light of God. The, the world isn't going to hide it from us, right? Leonard Ravenhill, that I, 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 great saint of God who wrote so much about revival, he said that the church alone can limit the Holy One of Israel. Satan has no power to block the plan of God. He's been defeated. But we have the ability to hide the light of God, okay? I'm going to tell you a fact about the moon. You're writing these down, right? Okay. We only ever see one side of the moon. That's true. Yeah. Right? You know about the dark side of the moon? Mm -hmm. Since the rotational period of the moon is exactly the same as the orbital period, the same portion of the moon is always facing the Earth. I don't know where that, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they say the dark side. Doesn't turn the, the, you yeah. never see one side of the moon. It's always facing away from the Earth. Always. Right? Mm -hmm. There's the dark side. Mankind only sees one side, never sees the dark side, but God sees both. Man sees the outside, God sees the heart. This would be, and should be, scary, except for the fact that it says, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8.1. God sees everything in our hearts. He sees the dark side of us. Okay? We're trying to hide from what we're trying to hide from people, what we hide from, from the world. I want you to know that God sees. But God said, I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake. 
and will not remember your sins. Isaiah 43, 25. And he says, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Psalm 103, verse 11 and 12. You get that? I mean, this is, this is so important to understand. Because this is God revealing his plan, really revealing his nature. The fact that he would use us, our fallen human nature, he can use that in our lives. Why? Because he's, he, it's his light. It's just that lump of clay, people, clay that rock. It is so, it is so natural for us to want people to see us. And we have, no, we have nothing worth seeing. You know, it, it has to get, this is what humility is about, is understanding that we're just a tool in the hand of God. And how gloriously he can use us by showing his glory through us.